Her goal is to be Big Ten Pitcher of the Year this season. She's off to a good start, just over three ERA, 10 and four in the circle. As Mabry, the center fielder, will lead this game off for Michigan State. And the first pitch lined down on the ground. Woods scoops, fields, throws in time for out number one. So one quick out for White. Good. Now we get a look at the Terps defense. Jaden McFarland, the captain of the outfield. And we see a little bit of different defensive alignment today for the Terps. Schlotterbeck usually in the circle over at first. Goff at second due to Ligori's injury in practice earlier this week. And Amelia Leck behind the plate. White just pitch in there for a strike. So Brian, a little bit different defensively, but this turf team has been excellent this season in the field. Second least amount of errors in the entire conference. Yeah, they have a great infield unit going out right there. We just saw that play by Sammy Woods over at shortstop, the freshman. She's made a big impact early on. Cut on and missed, and the count now 0-2. Mandy Espin at the plate, the second baseman. Another one of, one of the top hitters on the Spartan side. Espin stands in, and the pitch upstairs and away. Now the count one and two. As we mentioned, White coming off an excellent day in the circle against the Maryland Eastern Shore team. Nearly the perfect game, one hit allowed and only Four, and four strikeouts, and four innings pitch. Schlotterbeck ended the game, finished it off, both in the circle and at the plate with that walk-off home run to Mercy Rule. Fly ball into center. White, or excuse me, McFarland coming on, makes the catch for out number two. Two quick easy outs here for the Terps. That's what you want to see. Put the first three down in order. Hopefully they got the first two pretty easily. Get their bats up to the plate. Now, this should be an interesting battle all day long. Macy Lee, who was extremely great at the plate discipline-wise, she was one of two Spartans last season to have more walks than strikeouts. On the se season, hitting 360. First pitch inside and the count 1-0. It's a great stat for her last season. So far, even on the season when it comes to walks and strikeouts, eight apiece does lead the team in batting average with that 360, just a hair above Mabry. And White is not a pitcher that allows too many free passes, so it should be an interesting matchup today. Pitch outside, and the count now 2-0. and oh. They were talking about that phenomenal outing she had against Eastern Shore back on Wednesday. Zero walks allowed, which actually broke a six-game walk streak allowed for her, so just great stuff out there in the circle so far for White. Two down here in the first. Lee at the plate and the 2-0. -oh. Off speed. High strike in the count now, two and one. And our umpires for this afternoon, Joe Havenheel over at third, Bobby Martinez at first, and Brad Newton behind the plate for game one of two today. The first baseman, Colette Allen, waits on deck. And the two on offering. Down the heart of the plate, and the count now even at two. Really good stuff so far we're seeing from White. Like, issued the two balls earlier on in this at bat, but now has been able to find the strike zone in back-to-back -back pitches. She's definitely looking for the strikeout here. Two and two, two outs. White looking for one more strike in this road half of the first. Two, two. Just high and the count moves full. And White has pitched in some pretty big games this year. Not her first conference game as she faced off against Indiana last weekend in a tough series for the Terps where they were swept in all three, but talking with Coach Montgomery earlier today, he was really impressed with how his team battled. Now the 3-2. Misses just inside, and we talked about the plate discipline of Lee, showcasing it right there, a two-out walk worked by the catcher. Talking about White's impressive performances earlier on in the season, she was the winning record of against number three, Oklahoma State, number 18, Oregon. Certainly up to any challenge that comes her way. Allen at the plate, hitting 333 on the season. Transfer from D3 Redlands University. 
First pitch down the heart of the plate, and the count 0 and 1. And picking up what I was talking about is she's picked up some big wins. You look at number three, Oklahoma State, who only have two losses on the season, one of those handed by the Terps and against number 18, Oregon, in that opening series down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. 0-1. Fouled back, and the count quickly 0-2. You know, Brian, it's going to be important today. The Terps have to get off to a good start, especially you look at the numbers when Michigan State gives up the first run. They have yet to win a game this season, so it's going to be really important for the Terps to tack on a few early runs. Lee over at first after the walk. Allen at the plate, fouls it back just over our heads down the first base side, and the count remains 0-2. A moment ago, you were talking about how Michigan State has yet to win a game when they've allowed the first run of the contest. That's going to be a tall task against such a ferocious Maryland offense, which has been red hot lately coming into conference play. Now the 0-2 from the senior. Strike three call down the heart of the plate. Weish lets out a yell. An up and down afternoon against Wisconsin on Sunday. Four and a third innings, three hits and three earned runs. The game Michigan State was in control for about half the game. First pitch inside. They were up 2 0 and then had a 3 2 lead for giving up a handful of runs in both the two lat in the uh, fifth and sixth innings to fall 9 to 3 to the Badgers. Now Mikami at the plate 1 0. Misses outside and the count now 2 0. You said Mikami's average doesn't exactly blow you away, but when you take a look at her, Stolen bases. She's 16 for 18 so far in the season, which is fourth in the Big Ten. She's got great speed for a leadoff hitter. And last season, led the conference with 30 stolen bases. She was not caught once the entire year. And it's in there for a strike. And that's been the calling card of Mark Montgomery's teams over the past few years, the speed. They love to play small ball, and they love to steal bases, and it's paid dividends in the past couple of seasons for them. Yeah, you and I were talking a little earlier how they usually – they work really well with these small ball lineups and they incorporate their power very well. Now the 2-1 from Guidry. Outside part of the plate and the count 2-2. Two and two. Mikami leads this team in stolen bases as we mentioned, 16 for 18 on the season. And slotted in the usual leadoff spot for her. And the 2-2 two -two offering. Misses away, and the count now full. And that's another thing Makami's really good at is she has a good eye at the plate, and the ability to draw walks has been one of her calling cards as well. Yeah, 11 walks so far on this season would be a great threat on the base pass with those stolen bases if she can make a walk out of this at-bat. Guidry's ready in the 3-2. Chopped foul down the first base side. Gidgery's pitched in some big games as well, the sophomore, back in late February against Tennessee. But she got roughed up two innings and eight runs, five of those earned seven hits. And this is a Terps team that the offense has been great this season. And, of course, Amelia Leck showcasing her power at the plate, second in the Big Ten with 11 home runs. And that one's outside as well. And a nice walk worked by Makami. And that's one of the things the Terps have done well this year is small ball, they're still doing that. But, of course, the home run has been a big factor, too, this year. Yeah, if you look at some of the Big Ten stats right now, Amelia Leck, like we said, tied for second in the Big Ten with 11 home runs. We look at the rest of the team. we got Trinity Schlaughterbeck, four. J.D. McFarland, three. They've certainly got some long ball threats on this team. But right now, with McComey getting on base, they've got one of the more imposing stolen base runners in the Big Ten on base early. Golf at the plate, chops is over the third. Barroso has it, throws the second for one on to first, not in time. So the lead runner, Makami, is out, but over at first and safely is Goff. Guys could be an easy double play for Michigan State. Pitch inside, and Goff is off and running. Throw down the second, not in time. A point I was going to make when she got onto first base is she also has a decent number of stolen bases. Eight for ten so far on this team. Another great speed in that two-hole slot. Now McFarland at the plate. 
course, the star of this Terps team offensively the past couple of years. First team all Big Ten last season. Takes inside and the count 1-0. And, and there is Goff showcasing her speed. The nice throw down at the second from Lee, but not in time. Throw just a little high. Getting an Esmond there at second. Good stolen base for Goff. We're at second, reached first on the fielder's choice. Chopped back foul on the count two and one. McFarland hitting just south of 400 this year. 392, three homers, 22 RBIs, and she's been excellent as she's been all, all career long as a Terp. Yeah, now the runner on scoring position, like you said, Michigan State does not do well when allowing the first run of the game. Now with one of the faster runners on the team in scoring position, it'll be interesting to see how Michigan State responds. Shot behind home plate, and the count now even at two. 2021 McFarland, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, so she came into College Park with a lot of hype, and she certainly delivered. Yeah, and that Freshman of the Year campaign led the Terps in slugging runs, RBIs, doubles, triples, home runs, and total bases. A nice take from McFarland, and the count now moves to three and two. So, Brian, so far we've seen the Terps work a lot of quality at bats. And that's something we've seen recently from these Terps, working their way into friendly counts, deep in the count, waiting for theirs, and being able to unload when they finally get it, or take the forehook. And the payoff pitch. Slowly chopped over to the second baseman, Espen, underhand throw the, not in time! Creating one less out, now just one down, the pitch outside as Goff took off for home for a second and comes back and a steal for McFarland, yet another one. So now runners on second and third. The Terps really showcasing that speed. A couple stolen bases, beating out a ground ball in the infield. It's been a great start for Maryland. Yeah, Lewis was showing bunt on that one, kind of confused the infield, which allowed McFarland to get to second. And the pitch outside, Sidney Lewis, the DP, batting in the cleanup spot for Maryland. And now with two runners in scoring position, just one out for Maryland. This is a very dangerous situation for Michigan State early on in this one. Freshman coming off an 0-2 day with a walk on Wednesday. 1-1 one, one offering. Chopped over to the shortstop. Fox goes home. And an easy out at home to get the lead runner. And runners on the corners once again for the Terps. But still runners, two runners on for the Terps. And now Amelia Leck, second in the Big Ten with 11 home runs. A big spot here. And that one's outside, and Sydney Lewis steals second. Bit of hesitation there in between first and second base. Wasn't sure if she wanted to go or not. Yeah, had a little hesitation right there. halfway there, but gets her her first collegiate stolen base for the freshman. Three stolen bases in the first frame for Maryland. McFarland over at third. Pitch inside to Leck, and the count now 2-0. Definitely seems to be a point of emphasis from head coach Mark Montgomery to get his Terrapins running early and often on these base paths. Mark Montgomery in the offseason called Amelia Leck with her, her arm strength behind the plate, the Johnny Bench type talent pitch inside as part of the plate and the count two and one. So again, we haven't seen her play much catcher this season, but with the injury and in practice to Ligori, things being shuffled around a little bit with Leck finding herself behind the plate. You see the numbers. She's been the biggest offensive contributor this season for Maryland. 2-1 from Gidry. Upstairs inside, 3-1. Gidry now with the possibility of loading the bases. Definitely not something she would want to do, but force would be at any base there. Lewis over at second after the stolen base. McFarland at third. And the pitch. Fouled back behind home plate. The count full at three and two. A big pitch here, Brian. Three, two, two outs. Terps have threatened, but yet to score here in the first. Three, two from Guidry, fouled back as Lex stays alive. 
He's been an on-base machine this season. 444 on-base percentage. A healthy hack there from Leck. Yeah, she currently leads the team in home runs right now, and that was a big swing right there. She was definitely trying to bring her girls in from second and third there to open this one up early. 3-2. Fouled back again. Looks like it went off Leck's foot onto the on-deck circle. And a nice battle here between the righty Gidry and the catcher Leck. Yeah, neither one willing to give an inch of room right here. Leck trying to bring the runners in from second and third, and Gidry trying to get out of this early pickle unscathed. Three two offering. Fly ball into left, but hooks foul. That had the home run distance, but that wind just pushed a little bit too far to the left. Yeah. Clean swing right there. Just absolutely got a great piece of that one. Just roped it foul. The wind playing a factor early on here. There's all the pedals going on around us with the wind, but apparently having a factor early on in this one. Three two. Outside and Leck works a walk. A great at bat from Leck, fouling off three consecutive pitches and working a hard earned walk to load the bases for Michaela Jones. Bases loaded here for Maryland. First pitch outside part of the plate in the count 0 and 1. Like you said, only one for one in that last game, but an on base machine, one for one with a triple, a walk, and a hit by pitch. So she was able to reach base all three times and score all three times. She'll be looking to get on here to drive a runner home. 0-1, fouled back in the count quickly, 0-2. McFarland over at third, Lewis at second, Leck at first. A walk, a fielder's choice, infield single, fielder's choice, and a walk brings us to where we are now. Two outs, and the base is loaded, still scoreless. Another big pitch coming from the righty. Outside and low. Now the count one and two. Taking a look over at the Michigan State bullpen. Looks like Ashley Miller is warming up. Has not pitched since Boise State, but might be called into relief early for this one if Gidry lets it loose. One, two, fouled back again. Kayla Jones working another good at bat for Maryland, trying to stay alive down in the count. We mentioned the wind gusts up to 15 miles per hour, blowing from right to left, which aided the foul ball to Leck. Or else that may have been fair. One, two. Outside and another good take from Jones. Count even at two. And we talked about how important it is to score first. Michigan State, when they score first, they're nine and four, two, two. Fly ball into right center. Wash going back at the track and that one hops the wall. Two runs are gonna score for Maryland over the third and the third run scores. So a three run triple, back to back games with a triple for Jones and the Terps busting things open here in the first, it's three nothing. See the emotion from head coach Mark Montgomery. He's excited as well, and the Terps jump out to a 3-0 lead. Now Schlotterbeck at the plate. And it's 1-0. Schlotterbeck undoubtedly the offensive hero last time out versus University of Maryland Eastern Shore. 3-for-3, three three, two home runs, including the walk-off three-run shot. And the pitch fouled back. I mentioned this before, Michigan State 1-10 in 10 when allowing their opponents to score first. So not a good start if you're Faith Gidry and the Spartans. But if you're Maryland, you couldn't have asked for a better start here <laughs> yep. offensively. Bunch of stolen bases, three runs scored early. Now the 1-1, softly down the first base side and tagged out down the first base line, but not before the Terps. 
with three runs of their own in the bottom half of the first inning, a three-run triple. First pitch to Barroso, cut on and missed for strike one. Barroso coming off a fairly impressive outing against Wisconsin recently in that last game was one for two, three for seven overall in the series with a home run in the second game. 0-1, cut on the missed once again, and watch quickly ahead, 0-2. Barroso hitting 244 on the season. No homers, 10 RBIs. Weich looking to get off to a good start here in the second. 0-2 just outside. Weich was looking for the call, does not get it. Barroso has been a mainstay for the Spartans in the starting lineup. 86 starts throughout her Spartans career. Just a junior. One, two, swung on and missed for strike three. It's Weish's second strikeout of the day. She's been dealing early on in the off as we see the swing and a miss right here. Just a great pitch from Weich. She's been on a tear recently. Now Janae Wash at the plate. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Weich. Wash, who was unable to get to that ball in the bottom half of the first inning, the RBI triple, takes outside, just out of her reach in right center, allowing Michaela Jones to reach third base and clear the bases for Maryland. Wash in that series against Wisconsin, 0 for 8, which broke a four-game hitting streak for her before that series, definitely looking to get back on track. Now the 1-0, swung on and missed. Another good pitch from Weich in the count one and one. So another good. One one pitch, Terps lead three nothing here in the second. Pitch fouled back one and two. Michigan State looking to strike back after the three runs allowed in the bottom half of the first. Wash from St. John's, Florida. Now the 2-2, just outside and high. Wash missed the majority of her freshman and sophomore seasons due to injury, but now the junior getting some, the redshirt junior getting some much deserved playing time. Her 19th game started in 2023. And looking at back at her best season in 2021, was first on the team in slugging back when she had a 474, 244 so far in this season. Looking to work back into that. 3-2. Sliced foul down the third base side. A lot of good at-bats, Brian, worked here in the opening two innings for both sides. Yeah, impressive at-bats so far that we've seen from both sides. Both have been able to work their way into throws the first in time for out number two. Taking a look at that one, just a soft dribbler back to White, able for, to put second put out of the game, of the inning, excuse me, for the Terps. 
Now Wiley at the plate, the DP. Two quick outs for White, or I should say two easy outs for White. She's retired the last three hitters. Pitch cut on and missed, and the count now 0-1. Wiley from Peoria, Arizona. The senior catcher starting her 19th game of the season. Fouled back. And the count moves to 0-2. Bit of an offensive drought for her. It was 0 for 2 in two games against Wisconsin. One of her last 11 recently looking to also get back in the offensive column. Had her best game of the season against UIC when she was two for three, three RBIs and a home run. Looking for similar production here in this one. Now the 0-2 offering. Fouled back once again. So Wiley stays alive. AJ Militello on deck if it comes to her. Brian, so far in this white shouting, what have you liked from the right-hander in the circle? It's just truly a work of art to watch her pitching out there in the circle. Great, com great command of her pitches. We saw her issue a few walks early on in the first two, three at-bats of the game, but has since then just really found her control, finds the strike zone, not afraid to go at pitchers. Or er, pit hitters, excuse me. Softly fouled right behind home plate. Wiley able to just stay alive. Weich can dial it up to 70 miles per hour with that fastball, which is equivalent to about 100 miles per hour in baseball terms. So that's as fast as they come. But a great job also, like a lot of Maryland pitchers, keeping hitters off balance. They can really go throw some off-speed pitches as well. 0-2, just outside. I think the catcher Leck thought that was a strike too and now apologizes to the home plate umpire. Le Leck laughing that one out after she certainly thought it was a strike. Looks like White thought it was a strike too on yeah. that one. Everyone in this Maryland infield thought it was a strike, but called ball, keep the count at one and two. White's delivery, one, two, and that misses outside, two and two. Talking about how good White has been out there in the circle today. Take a look at the rest of this Maryland bullpen. Some great pitchers, Schlaughterbeck, White, obviously the two phenomenal starters. And then we're getting a look at Kira Booker, the incredible freshman who currently leads the nation in saves with nine. Might get a chance to see her out there today. Now the 2-2. Off speed up high, and there we see White changing speeds, but Wiley isn't fooled. And you hear this term often in, in baseball and softball, professional at-bats, professional hitters. But I think we've seen a lot of them so far today. Yeah, especially we're looking at this at-bat from Kennedy Wiley. Looked off two, what appeared to be strikes, called for balls. Great, at, great eye out there at the plate. And the payoff pitch. A high fly pop-up. And the shortstop Woods is under it, makes the catch for out number three. He came out, it's a nice day, temperature-wise, 65 degrees. And chopped right back to the pitcher, Gidry. Nice play in the circle for out number one. Now Sammy Woods at the plate. Shortstop earning the start. Underclassman's been, had a lot of big contributions to this team this season. She was two for two with an RBI against Eastern Shore back on Wednesday. Second on the team in doubles, just to showcase how much speed she has with that 291 average. And the pitch ripped down the third base side, but we see the wind in effect once again, hooking foul. Bring to this Maryland offense the freshman. Now shows bunt down the first base side, but that one foul.
Showed bunt right there. Looked like she might have tried to pull it back. It was seemed to be a late bunt attempt as well. A nice job hiding it from the righty Gidry. That doesn't prove successful in the count now, one and two. Pitch missing outside, two and two. As the cherry blossoms with the win continue to come on as the cherry blossom season here in the DMV as the wind brings all the petals onto the field. Get a nice look at those cherry blossoms there. A DC staple, 2-2 two -two pitch. That one misses low, three and two. And you gotta wonder, and maybe it's not a big part of it, but all the blossoms going in between the pitcher and the catcher might be hard to see, hard to find the strike zone with all those things fluttering around in the air. Woods coming off a two for two day with a run back on Wednesday. Rips it down the third base side and hooks foul once again. Again, we mentioned having a nice season the freshman inserted into the starting lineup for Mark Montgomery's squad, hitting just under 300, 11 RBIs, 15 runs as well. Yeah, taking a look back at her high school career, was the defensive and offensive player of the year at Mission Viejo High School, where she attended. Was first team all league, an MVP selection, and district champs to go with her resume. Like a lot of these players that Montgomery has recruited, some great accolades. Chopped over to the shortstop, Fox throws. And it sends the first baseman off the line. And with one down, the Terps have a runner on for the top of the order. Was thrown out at second in her first plate appearance. Chops it over the first baseman, backhander over the second for one onto first not in time. She was erased on the fielder's choice in her first at bat, reaches once again. Goff at the plate, was thrown out at home in her first at bat. The first pitch outside. Broke for home after a ground ball into the infield and an easy out for the Spartans. But golf certainly not an easy out. She's reached base 11 of her last 12 appearances and during that span hitting north of 300, 400. And the pitch just inside turns around golf and the count 1-0. Taking a look at the stolen base leaders in the Big Ten, you can see Makami currently tied for third with 16 there. Just great speed so far on the year, 16 of 18. Three Real threat out there on the base pass for Maryland. Three stolen bases in the first inning for Maryland. Makami did not have one of them. That one's fouled back into the screen. But Brian, I don't think it would surprise any of us if, if she broke on one of these next few pitches. Oh no, definitely not, and with two outs now, we could definitely see her in motion. So Makami over at first. Pitch outside, and there we see Makami slides in safely. Four stolen bases for the Terps. We're only in the second inning. That'll be her 17th stolen base as she gets a great jump off that one. Just takes off with the legs churning. No question about it, it's safe down there at second. A little slow-mo replay. Tag not able to be applied. She stays on the base for her 17 bag now of the season. Moves her up to third in the Big Ten. So that was called a strike and chopped foul, so they count two and two. The one through four hitters, each with one stolen base this afternoon. Terp stat padding and the stolen, ba stolen base category. That small ball like we talked about really proving fruitful early on in this one. The Purdue transfer golf stands in. That one's outside. McCombie thought about third for a second. It goes back to second. 321 on the season. Nine RBIs, an on-base machine as well. 436. Talk about how good Goff has been offensively. Defensively, too, ranked 14th nationally in terms of caught runners with nine. An all-around great asset for the Terps. 3-2. High fly ball into left. 
And the left fielder Matello under it makes the catch in foul territory for out number three. The Terps threaten but do not score. We head to the bottom half of the second inning. So Militello, Fox, and Mabry, eight, nine, and one, do up for the Spartans. Pitch to Militello, fouled back, and the count now 0 and 1. Four consecutive batters and six of the first seven retired, or six of the first seven retired by White. Brian, we felt a few raindrops during that half inning break. We have the wind, let's hope that the rain can be avoided. Hey, we, are, we already moved yesterday's game up to today for a little double header because of the rain. Hopefully, won't be a factor here in this one as we once again see the cherry blossoms come onto the field. Cut on and missed in the count, now 0-2. Militello, Militello from Howell, Michigan. The junior stands in, cut on the miss. Three pitches, three strikes, one down here in the third. That'll be Weich's third strikeout on the day. Just another great performance out there in the circle for one of the best pitchers in this rotation. As we can see there, just another swing and a miss. We've seen a lot of those today from Michigan State. Just unable to touch Weich's stuff. The Tennessee transfer, Anna Fox, now stands in. First pitch shows bunt over the white, throws the first and a nice scoop by the first baseman, Goff, for out number one. Well, that was the second baseman, Goff, who was manning first base on that play. Yeah, good little pick on that one, just right back to the mound, able to corral it, and just a good scoop over there over at first. From Looking like that one might have taken a little bounce there, but able to corral that one for the second out. Two quick outs for White. Brings up the top of the order in Mabry. The pitch outside, a nice block from Leck. And the count now 1-0. Brian, what does Michigan State have to do right now to get anything going offensively? What they did good earlier on is working deep into those counts, getting in those those two twos, those three two full counts, and waiting for theirs. And they put a few in play, but just couldn't able to get it past the infield here. Check swing, call the strike, and they count one and one. But the real question is, what what can you do when you're facing a pitcher of such caliber as White here? So with Lewis manning the DP spot, spot, she's now over at first. Defensive change for the Terps there for now, and the, can't, and the pitch in there for a strike. So some wind, some, a few raindrops here in the third inning, all types of weather events. Still a nice day out at 65 degrees. White looking for one more pitch for another 1-2-3 two, inning. 1-2 one, offering. Just outside. A nice frame from the catcher leg, but does not get the call. Maybe a couple of Michigan State friendly calls here. A couple of <laughs> called balls that look like strikes upstairs from our vantage point, but still great pitching out there in the circle from Weich. Trying to get her fourth K of the day. 2-2 two, two offering. Fouled back again. Just over our heads, another gust of cherry blossom petals come our way. Typical Maryland weather day here. <laughs> As we take a look in the dugout, see some stuffed animals making an appearance. Kira Booker, the nation's leader in saves there on the right, which what appears to be some kind of iguana. <laughs> I think that was a turtle. Oh. It's gotta be. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch. Upstairs, three and two. Hey, Brian, whatever works. Whatever <laughs> works in the circle, whatever works in the field at the plate. Maybe it's some kind of it. some kind of good luck charm, oh, talisman, whatever's working. Took off their best start since 2008. And if it's thanks to a stuffed turtle, well, <laughs> keep it going. We'll have to uh, ask about that and ask those hard-hitting journalism questions 
uh, in the middle of game one and two. We'll get you the answer to that in game two. That one's lined to, into right center for a base hit. Mabry with the first hit of the afternoon for Michigan State. And you're talking about what the Spartans have to do as we get another look at this one from Mabry. Just able to work deep into that count, 3-2, like I said. Only thing the Terps can do at this point. Could have maybe been speared off there at second from Goff, just unable to crowd for the third out of the inning. Great diving play there. Just unable to nag that ball. Espen now at the plate. Flew out to center in her first at bat. Takes outside and the count one and out. But a good piece of hitting there from the leadoff hitter Mabry and that's what she does. Batting north of 350 coming into this afternoon. Her first hit, team's first hit. And Michigan State looking to find some sort of offensive momentum here in the third. Now a little speed on first for the Spartans. Esman swings and misses. Count one and one. So I was saying Mabry currently leads her squad respectively with four stolen bases. So definitely a threat there. Two outs running on any kind of contact. Esman hitting 275 with 13 RBIs this season. Fly ball into left center, drops down for a hit. Back-to-back -back hits for Michigan State, so now two on, two outs, and the tying run coming to the plate in Macy Lee. <laughs> Brian, that ball just died in the outfield. Yeah, nice little blooper there off the bat. No one really close enough in the area to make a play on that. Great little single there in between three Maryland defenders to now put two runners on, one in scoring position for the Spartans. So Lee at the plate. First pitch, right down the middle in the count, no and one. Lee with only five RBIs on the season, but a nice job at the plate so far in her 20th game started, hitting just over 350. You can see she worked a walk in her first at-bat of the day. Gladly take one now for the bases loaded and the go-ahead run to come to the plate. Oh, one check swing into right center. And Klein is under it, makes the catch for an easy out number three. So the Spartans this time threaten, do not score. They leave 2-1. We head to the bottom half of the third inning with Maryland up 3-0 here on Big Ten Plus. Their highest ranking in 24 years, their first ranking in 15 years, all thanks to the job that Coach Montgomery has done. First pitch inside and it's 1-0. Montgomery getting his 600th career win last season. Great legacy for the fourth year head coach here at Maryland. 23 years of coaching experience overall. 1-0. Chopped foul over to the on-deck circle for Michigan State. And Montgomery signing the five-year extension back on September 1st of last season. The Terps look to have him for Couple more years and potentially many more to come. Gidry back in the circle for a third inning of action. Terp scored three in that first, have yet to score since. Right back to the pitcher Gidry, and just as the home half of the second started, the home half of the third starts with a ground out. Sidney Lewis, the prosper Texas native, now at the plate. That one's ripped foul down the third base side. Reached on a fielder's choice, scored on the bases clear and triple from Jones back in the first. You can see currently batting 238 on the year so far. Does have two home runs, nine RBIs to her credit. Good power, especially for a freshman. Takes high in the count. Now two and one. One and one, excuse me. As you said, good power for the freshman looking back at her high school days. Broke the single season record at Prospect High School in Prosper, Texas. Four doubles and has the career record of 34. Takes inside and the count now two and one. Kidry getting a quick talking to from her infielders. Gets back inside the circle. A nice job from the right-hander, right 
settling down after, the, after that first inning where she allowed the three runs. Lined right into the glove of Barroso. A nice play by the third baseman for out number two. It's back out there because you had some momentum there in that top of the third, but just not able to really get anything out of that. Now looking for quick three outs here. Leck at the plate. A great at bat back in the first inning where she worked the walk and it paid dividends as Jones unloaded one the right field to score three runs. Inside part of the plate, count now one and one. Amelia Leck, who struggled last season, you look at the numbers, just a 103 average in 29 games, nine started. Coach Montgomery said that that's not the type of Leck they expected. They expected her to showcase the power and the ability at the plate that she has this season. That's what they expected her to do last year. She fouls it back. And now the count, one and one. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. She had zero home runs in all of last season. Now currently 11 here, as you can see. Tied for second in the Big Ten with 11. Absolute great power coming off that bat. And she is a huge part of why the Terps have already surpassed their home run total from last season. Now the one, two, fly ball into center, chases Mabry back, but makes the catch at the warning track for out number three. Quick three outs in that last half inning for Michigan State now looking to get some momentum offensively. First pitch inside and a big get for the Spartans, Allen, last season was a first team All-American we mentioned from Division Three Redlands University. Hit over 400 last season for the Spartans, a 478 on base percentage. And yeah, two time Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Athlete of the Year to go along with her great time there for the Bulldogs. Called the strike and the count now one and one. A number of impact transfers for both sides. Of course, Kylie Goff playing second today, usually behind the plate for the Terps, the transfer from Purdue. Colette Allen from Redlands. They also have a transfer from Tennessee as well, the Spartans. Fly ball into right. Jason Klein back makes an outstanding catch at the warning track for out number one. Great play there from Klein out in right field. Great read off the bat. Immediately ran back. Thought that one might have had a chance to go along. She had 12 homers as a sophomore at Redlands, but not enough juice under that one as Klein makes a great over-the-shoulder catch running into the wall there. Great play. A bit of a difficult route to that ball, especially with the wind, but Klein making it look easy. A nice play right in front of the wall for out number one. You got to think if she doesn't get one, that's at least a double for Michigan. Gets their offense going. Yep. And fortunately for the Terps and White, no runners on, one down, and Barroso up. She was the second strikeout victim from the right-hander back in the second. White, an efficient outing so far in the circle. That one misses away in the count, one and one. Barroso. Another California native, along with Allen, hitting four or five in the order from Monrovia, California. Saw her make a great play defensively over at third base, spear in that line drive, now trying to get some offensively going at the plate after striking out looking last time. Pitch upstairs in the count now, two and one. It's been an up and down 2023 campaign for her. Coming off a nice weekend against Wisconsin, including three hits, two RBIs. Like takes her position behind the plate. And the 2-1 count coming. That one's fouled back. It's two and two. Looks like the Terps have a little action going in there. Bullpen from our vantage point. Looks like Kiera Booker is getting her arm loose out there. Like we said, the freshman currently leads the nation in saves with nine, is one away from tying the Big Ten record for a single season at 10. Just another impact freshman that we've been seeing early on and often for this Terrapin lineup. 
And if you're Michigan State, you certainly don't want to see her. She has been dominant in the circle all season long. Upstairs, two and two. We're certain to see her at some point in one of these two games today. Looks like we'll see her here in game one. The count, excuse me, now three and two. The pitch from the right hander. Popped up in the shallow part of the infield and Woods is able to make the catch for out number two. Looks like Sammy Woods thought she had that one, but it was Lewis who ended up coming in from first for the out there. A little miscommunication there at the middle of the field, but safe out either way for the Terps as she crawls that one. Two hands for safety. Thank you, Brian. Yep, so as we mentioned, Lewis, the DP, over at first now. Making the catch there, so two down, and Wash at the plate. Grounded out to the pitcher, Weich, in her first at-bat. Cut on and missed, and it's 0-1. Another swing and a miss there for the Spartans. We've seen a lot of those today as take a look at Wash here. Grounded out back in the second. Just 217 so far on the season. Does have those four RBIs, but swing and a miss there for an 0 1 count puts Weish in advantage. Pitch down the heart of the plate, and it's quickly 0 2 to Wash. Weiss so far looking for her fourth strikeout to keep it a strikeout per inning here so far in the stats. Weich looking for one more. This is just outside one and two. Wash slotted in the outfield this season. Played the infield and the outfield throughout her career but shifted outfield full time prior to that 2022 injury we mentioned. Missed a lot of her freshman and redshirt sophomore seasons due to injury. 1-2 pitch. Softly hit to the third baseman. Jones makes the catch for out number three. Hitting 325 on the season. Had three more RBIs to her total thanks to that big swing back in the first. That one's fouled down the third base side now, 0-2. Last year started all 52 games primarily over at third base and talking with Montgomery earlier today about not just the offense but the defense. She's been great over at the hot corner. She's only made two errors the entire year and that came against Cal Baptist in that opening series down in Mexico. It's great to see all these Terps producing equally well from the plate and in the field. It's quite a great roster that. 0-2 oh, and that one hits Jones square in the helmet. Can't say I would have reacted the same way. <laughs> so Schlotterbeck now at the plate. Fouls it back 0-1. Three hits for the Terps. Schlotterbeck looking for her first hit of the afternoon. We talked about it earlier, how we were used to seeing her in the circle. We saw her earlier on on first base. But she's so good offensively, too. Currently second on the team in home runs with four and 24 RBIs. She's had a really good season offensively and in the circle. And we talked about you know, the career high, six RBIs, two homers on Wednesday, and then finishing the game in the circle. Such a dual threat player for this Terps team. Not just in the circle, but also at the plate. A big homer last year against Michigan's Alex Storacco, one of the best pitchers in all of college softball. And to think we're leaving out the fact that she pitched a perfect game versus Texas A&M Commerce earlier this season, which consisted of eight strikeouts. Just a tremendous talent for this Maryland roster. The count now 0-2. Schlotterbeck at the plate, nice piece of hitting across the outstretched arm of Esmond into right field, diving in just not in time, excuse me, 
was Jones, so she's thrown out that second heads up play by the right fielder, Wash, to get the lead runner. Decided to play it rather safe than sorry and not go for the double play. That one's grounded over the shortstop. Fox flips to one, flips to second for one on the first, not in time. That gets away from the first baseman. Woods now at the plate and shortly looped to the shortstop. Fox makes the catch and that's out number three. We head to the fifth inning. Terps lead 3 nothing here on Big Ten Plus. Wiley popped out to the shortstop in the first at bat. Swings at the first pitch. Softly chopped over the first baseman Lewis. Flips to first. And just in time as golf covering for out number one. Now Michigan State down to their last five outs in this one here. Quick little defensive adjustment there for who was covering first on that one. As a put out comes relatively easy. But yeah, now Michigan down to their last five outs in this game. You got to think they got to start going a little, little urgency here offensively at the plate. Can't afford to wait for those deep counts. If they see one, they just got to take it. Latello now at the plate. Just high, and it's 1-0. Struck out was the third strikeout victim of Weich back in the third. Now the second hitter up here in the fifth. As you mentioned, Brian, Michigan State running out of outs quickly. 1-0. Just high, and it's now 2-0. She's coming off a nice weekend against Wisconsin. A pair of two hit days, including three runs in those first two of three games against the Badgers. And much like the Terps opening Big Ten series, the games had to be rescheduled, shifted around a little bit due to weather. That one's cut on and missed two and one. They played the doubleheader on Friday and then the series finale on Sunday. as the Terps play the doubleheader on Saturday and then the series finale on Sunday. Yeah, interesting to note, both teams coming off of Rocky Conference Series last week, Michigan State did not have their midweek tune-up against Detroit Mercy. That was canceled. Maryland did. And Maryland played very well in that one, playing very well in this one, carrying over that productivity. Productivity. Michigan, Michigan State was not able to play their midweek game, coming in a little rusty, and it's showing here in the late innings of this one. The count now 2-2 to Militello. Looking to provide a spark for the Spartans offense. Only two hits on the afternoon. 2-2 two -two pitch. Cut on and missed strike three. It's going to stay on the season for A.J. Militello. Been kind of feast or famine. Second on the team in home runs with two, but now leading the team with 20 strikeouts. So Weich is hyped up there. Now four strikeouts here in game one for the right-hander. The nine-hole hitter, Fox, at the plate. Grounded out to first in their last at-bat. Just outside in the count, 1-0. Oh. Looks like on that last at-bat from, or last swing from Fox, looks like he was going for the slap attempt there as we see. 0 for 1 so far, the ground out back in the third, just batting 200 on the season, looking to improve that in a big spot here. 1 0 offering. Chopped just into center field to the left side of the second base for a base hit. So a much needed hit for the Spartans, and the runner on with two down. Couldn't get the slap attempt in the swing before, got it down perfectly there, just split the gap in between White Woods. And Goff there. Now Michigan State with a base runner on in a very desperate situation. But if there's anybody you want up for Michigan State, it's probably Jess Mabry. Hitting over 350 this season. A hit back in the third. Swings at the first pitch, fouled back. Well, right. I was going to say, maybe, maybe as we said, alluding to earlier, leading Michigan State in a variety of offensive statistics. 364, three home runs, 14 RBIs, one for two so far on the day. A hit would be huge here for the Spartans, trailing three in the late innings. Now 
Leach readies and fires 0-1. Miss outside, 1-1. One and one. And talk about a team trying to come from behind and record some runs late innings. Maryland baseball was down late. They came back down five runs to win it 10-9 over number 25, Iowa. In another game that was marred by bad weather, they moved the first pitch up to that one to 1 p.m. Eastern. It's supposed to be a late afternoon start time. 1-1, one, one, just outside 2-1. and one. So a lot of wild weather across the Big Ten in these past couple of weeks. You think Maryland is used to this type of weather? All kinds of weather here all season long as Kara Booker has left the bullpen, has come back into the dugout, so looks like she's ready to go if things get a little ugly here in this one with a runner on first. 2-1 from Weich. A great pitch down the heart of the plate now, 2-2. Two and two. And This is Michigan State's golden opportunity with the tying run on deck, the top of the order due, with Esman waiting on deck. Top of the order, one, two, two for four on the afternoon. Mabry on the season has six multi-hit games, already won so far today. Definitely looking for a second one here. Two, two, popped foul once again. So a nice battle here between Mabry and Weich. Mabry went the other way back in the third inning, a nice piece of hitting, another quality at bat. Worked by the center fielder here. Perhaps one of the biggest at-bats for Michigan State here. As White shakes off the signal. 2-2 two, two from the righty. Foul down the first base side. And if Mabry can just straighten out their swing just a bit, find a gap in the right field area, try to move the runner up. It's like the first base umpire is calling for a new ball. It looks like we'll get a mound visit here for Maryland. Laura Heberling, her first season as pitching coach and assistant coach. <laughs> we talked about the good eye that she has. Looking for a good pitch here, 2-2. Slap down the third base side, hooking, a diving play by Makami, couldn't hold on. That would have been an excellent catch, but it popped out of her glove. Great diving attempt there from Makami, screaming in from that left field, fully extending, had it and just lost it when she hit the ground there. Would have been an emphatic third out to end this inning, but maybe we'll stay alive 2-2. An outstanding effort from Makami, couldn't hold on. And that gives more life to the Spartans in Maybrick. Let's see if they can take advantage. Fox over at first. Two down in the fifth. The pitch sails over the glove, or off the glove of Leck, and over to the backstop, allowing Fox to reach second. So the count now full. Saw their pitch outside off the top of the glove. Leck thought it popped up. Instead, it went right behind her, couldn't find it, which allowed Fox to advance to second. Not Big. the usual catcher, as we've seen, so some troubles there, allowing the runner to move into scoring position now. 3-2 pitch from Weich. Fouled back once again, this time down the first base side. Mabry spraying balls all over the field. Left field, right field. And now a 3-2 count coming. This has been quite the at-bat for Mabry. Does currently lead this Michigan State squad with 13 walks. Could walk herself on if she gets a pitch outside. 3-2. Slice down the right field line. And Klein under it makes the catch for out number three. So an ex excellent at bat from Mabry, but ends in a fly out to Klein. We head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Terps up three nothing here on Big Ten Plus. 
As Mikami will lead things off, we saw her with an excellent diving attempt back in the top half of the inning. Couldn't hold on, but nonetheless, White's able to work out of the inning with a fly out to right. First pitch inside. And Brian, we talked about the speed that she shows. Well, without the speed, she wouldn't have been able to even make a diving attempt on that ball back in the top half. Yeah, just great speed like we've seen on the day. Able to reach base twice already, one with a walk, one with a fielder's choice that she was able to leg out. Now they count one and one. Mikami with the walk and the fielder's choice, a stolen base back in the second. Gidry has worked around a base runner or two in two of the last three innings, but has been able to keep the damage, limit the damage of the Terps. The three runs, thanks to the bases clear and triple from Jones, the only runs so far in this contest. But now Maryland with their top of the order once again, the top three that put up those three early on there. One, two, chop slowly right in front of home plate. The throw from Gidry, just in time, and a nice play over at first by Allen to dig that out of the dirt for out number one. One for two on the day, or 0 for one on the day, fouled back, fouled out back in the second. Fly ball into shallow right field, and Wash makes the catch for out number two. Two quick outs for the righty Gidry. Stole second as well. One for two on the afternoon. Watches the first pitch tail outside, 1-0. Trying to potentially add a little insurance, maybe. See, she's one for three so far on the day. And the pitch just inside. And now the count, 2-0. McFarland, top five on the team last season, an average slugging percentage, run hits, RBIs, and home runs. This time grounds it over the shortstop. Fox throws in time for out number three. <laughs> A great opportunity here for Michigan State who have seen Weich for five plus inning and she has dealt all day, only three hits allowed. First pitch to Essman, taken low and outside, one and oh. Weich's stats so far on the day, five innings pitched, three hits, no runs allowed, just one walk and four strikeouts. Another multiple strikeout day for Weich, her only appearance. Now the one out, upstairs two and out. Esmond, Lee, and Allen do up for the Spartans. We saw Kendall Cates take her position behind the plate, replacing Lee back in the top half, or excuse me, the bottom half of the fifth. But Lee will bat here in the six. Inside and low, and they count two and out. And the pitch outside, a leadoff walk worked by the Spartans. Only the second walk allowed from the senior so far. Comes in the sixth inning. And another runner on for the Spartans. Second inning, they've done that. Another opportunity here to try to chip into the Terps 3-0 lead. White usually doesn't allow many walks so far on the season. A little uncharacteristic for her here late in this one. The 0 for 1 with a walk back in the first. From Phoenix, Arizona. 0-1 pitch. Popped up foul. Let giving chase, but instead Lewis makes the catch right in front of the Michigan State. Dugout for out number one. 
I was worried there might have been a collision between Leck and Lewis there. Instead, Lewis able to call off Leck, the catcher. As you can see there, it looked like Esmond took a step off first. Might have been threatening to go to second had that ball dropped. Instead, stays on first. Allen at the plate for the third time this afternoon. 0 for 2. Takes up high. It's 1-0. The junior has a hit in four of her last five games and eight of her last ten. Looking for a first hit here in game one. Now the 1-0. That one's popped up foul. Just out of the Maryland Softball Stadium near the front entrance and the count now one and one. Allen, kind of a streaky hitter, was 0 for 3 in their last game against Wisconsin, 2 for 10 in this series, but has had a couple four-game hit streaks so far on this season. Talked about the transfer from D3 Redlands. Phenomenal two seasons there for the Bulldogs. 1-1, one, one, outside, and it's now 2-1. and one. Esman over at first after the walk, then Lee popped out. Talking about her time with Redlands, had 12 home runs her sophomore year, doesn't have any so far on this season. Looked like she had a chance to back in the fourth, but instead flied out deep into right center. Nice catch from Klein there over the shoulder back in that one. Terps defense on full display this afternoon here in game one. Now the 2-1 from the right-hander inside, 3-1. That was a great catch by Klein earlier in this one. Ranging back at the wall made the catch. Of course, we almost saw the excellent play from Akami. A great effort an inning or so ago in foul territory. Couldn't hold on for the catch. Things going well for the Terps here in game one. They lead 3-0. Michigan State really hasn't going, gotten going much offensively. And the count now moves to full. 3-1 yeah, hitters count right there. Had the option to take it or swing, decided to take it now. The count runs full. A full count now from White to Allen. Barroso on deck. 3-2 pitch. Fouled back. And the count remains 3-2. and two. And if nothing else, Brian, got to give props to Michigan State. They've worked some great at-bats today. They just haven't all paid off. Yeah, I was just going to say, earlier on we saw a lot of their hitters working those deep counts, 2-2, two, 3-2, two, two, and they weren't really able to work their way onto base. Now we're seeing it with Esmond on first, able to work that 4-0 walk, and now with a full count to Allen. 3-2, popped foul once again, but Leck makes the catch just in front of the screen. A nice defensive play this time from the catcher, Leck, who has not played catcher much this season, but a nice play just in front of the screen for a big out number two. I don't know if we had a good angle on it, but that ball was so close to touching the net. Again, I look here at this one from our angle. Could have been more than a few inches away from getting contact with the net. Just a great play there from Leck. Forced a second out. Now Michigan stay on its last legs here. I thought that one was going to come back our way. I thought it was going to the net for sure, but yeah. it's a great Play there from Black, great awareness. Instead, stays in the field of play for out number two. Now the first pitch to Barroso outside. She's 0 for 2 on the day, popped out to the first baseman Lewis back in the fourth. Weich's mom shouting some words of encouragement. A mainstay here at Maryland Softball Stadium, always here. And now the pitch outside and the count two and out. Two and out, obviously, obviously in favor of Barroso here. Wouldn't want to walk. Now putting two runners on the base paths. 
Wedge obviously would love to finish out this game. Now the 2-0 offering. Chopped over to the shortstop Woods and throws the first in time. So once again, Michigan State strands a runner and we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Terps still with a 3-0 advantage here on Big Ten Plus. An all-Texas matchup here between Lewis and Guidry. Now Mont Bellevue made of Guidry in the circle. And Lewis from Prosper, Texas takes outside for ball one. Maryland obviously here in the bottom half of the six looking for a little insurance. Try to put this game away against Michigan State. Now the first pitch ripped down the first base side but foul. So Lewis, Leck, and Jones do up for the Terps. Four, five, six in the order. Looks like, looks like we're getting some action over in the Michigan State bullpen. Appears to be number seven, that is Ashley Miller, junior right-handed pitcher from Leo, Indiana. Has not pitched since Boise State back on March 5th. Be interesting to see if she comes here in relief. Inside in the count one and one. And the Terps definitely prefer not to face her. She has been a Michigan State legend, one of the all-time greats in the circle for the Spartans. Nights, I'd expect to see her in game two if we don't see her in game one. That one's ripped through into right field for a base hit and barely beating out the throw from Wash. Wash looking for a second outfield assist of the day and Lewis hustling down the line beats the throw by a step. Yeah, that was a great, great throw by Wash there. Just great defensive awareness to charge that throw into first. Really close play there, ultimately going in Maryland's favor. That one's checked foul down the third base side. Brian certainly wouldn't be surprising if we saw Davis run on to second in one of these next few pitches. Yeah, apparently stolen bases must have been part of the game plan going on to this one. We know Maryland's used to using their small ball to their advantage, but a good number of steals today for the Terps. Davis so far three for five on the season in that department. The pitch taken. Count now two and one. Or one and one, excuse me. Davis over at first. Leck looking to provide the Terps with some insurance here on the six. The lead's never been in doubt. The three runs back in the first thanks to the bases clearing triple from Jones. That one's fouled back over our heads. And since then, we haven't seen much offense. Only a, a combined seven hits. Four for the Terps, three for the Spartans here through five and a half. Yeah, it's been a really good pitcher's duel since that bottom of the first. Really great pitching from both sides that we've seen as Guidry looks to finish out this one here without needing a relief. Now the one-two ripped down the third base side. The count remains one and two. Left just a little early on that one, rips it down the third base side. She can get the timing down. We know what she's capable of doing. Nearly had a home run earlier in this one, but it was hooked foul due to the wind. One, two, runner off and running. But it's fouled back once again, this time down the first base side. Brian, a lot of foul balls this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, just get a little early on these ones. Like, obviously, these last two swings here. If she's able to time it up perfectly, those would look like they'd find the gap and really do some damage here late. One and two count coming to the catcher, Leck. Cut on and missed strike three down. Throw down the first, not in time. Davis dives back safely, but one down here in the bottom of the six. Davis looking pretty jumpy over there on first, obviously trying to extend over to second, potentially bring home a run to extend this lead to four. And the first pitch to Jones, just outside 1-0. and And that was the first strikeout of the day from Terps hitters, so a lot of props to them. The plate discipline, we've seen it, and Leck, Striking out for the first time, but 
Only one on the day for Maryland. And Jones now at the plate. She's reached base in both of her appearances. Outside, and the count now 2-0. and out. And if you're Maryland and you're looking to extend this lead, there's no one else you'd want, just judging off this game alone, than Michaela Jones. Obviously, the base is clearing triple we saw earlier in the first. The only scores of the game so far credited to her. See if she has a little more magic here in the bottom of the six to extend this lead even more. The pitch finds the strike sound now two and one. Lewis began the inning with a leadoff single to right. Davis replaced her as a pinch runner. And then Leck with the strikeout brings us to Jones. The benefactor of the three run triple back in the first. The lone three runs in this game. Down the heart of the plate once again. Now the count two and two. If Michigan State does fall, it would be a tough luck loss for Gidry, who's pitched excellent after that first inning. She's only allowed two hits since then, and only one hit since the third inning. 2-2. Two -two. That one's nubbed over to the catcher or to the pitcher. Gidry makes the catch for out number two. First pitch, swung on and missed, and it's 0-1. I haven't seen a lot of swing and misses from Maryland here today, but we've seen a couple in these recent at-bats. Trying to swing heavy and extend this lead with speedy runner and Davis over at first. Now the 0-1 pitch coming from Gidry. Missed in, or inside part of the plate, and the count now 0-2. And Brian, another impressive thing in the circle about Gidry today is she's induced a lot of soft contact. We saw it in the last out. Not many hard hit balls by the Terps. That one's over to the shortstop. Fox throws to second, but not in time. And Cameron Davis showcasing her speed, getting it to second safely. So now two down with two on. Now Klein at the plate. First pitch missed outside, 1-0. A great opportunity here for Maryland to tack on some insurance. Now two outs and a runner in scoring position. You gotta think Gidry is gonna go at Klein. Pitch popped foul down the third base side. One and one now on Klein. Klein's parents can, or grandparents I should say, can often be found here at Maryland Softball Stadium, often scoring the game, her grandfather here today in his usual spot behind home plate. Now the 1-1. Outside part of the plate, and a high strike called by home plate umpire Brad Newton. The count now 1-2. and Looks like Allen is going to have some words of encouragement from first base to her pitcher Gidry now. 1-2 pitch, cut on and missed strike three. And the righty Gidry works out of the jam. Two runners stranded for the Terps. Michigan State with one last opportunity. Weish looking to build on a great outing back on Wednesday after getting roughed up a bit in the weekend against Indiana. First pitch chopped over the Jones. Throws in time to first. And one quick out for the right-hander. Jones getting some action in the hot corner over there today. Already saw a line drive go her way. Now a fast grounder. Took a nice hop, able to adjust, make the throw over to first for the first out of the inning. Now Kendall Cates, who we saw behind the plate for an inning, replacing the DP Wiley at the plate. First pitch to Cates outside, and the count 1-0. Take a look at Cates this season. 217, no home runs. Three RBIs, though. Looking forward to get on base here. As Michigan State is down to its final two batters. Militello on deck. 1 0 pitch. 
Fly ball popped up towards the first base side. And the catch made by Jones. So two outs quickly, both recorded by Jones. And now Militello represents the final out for the Spartans. Jones ran all the way from third to make that play. It looked like the catcher Leck would have had the easiest route, or maybe even the first baseman Lewis, but instead Jones was able to call him off for the second out of the inning. Her second out of the inning. <laughs> Having a nice day defensively as she's had all season long. Weich looking to finish the job in the circle. Fits first pitch, cut on and missed, 0-1. Militello, 0 for 2 on the afternoon with two strikeouts. Weich has four strikeouts on the day. Her last two, Militello has been the recipient. A one pitch, swung on and missed strike two. Spartans now down to their final strike. This would be Weich's fourth complete game. Schlotterbeck, the other pitcher with four so far on the season. Weich has the sign. 0-2 offering. Outside part of the plate, strike three called. And Courtney White, she had another complete game, seals the win for the Terps. 3-0 here in seven. White's final stat line on the day, six and two thirds innings pitch, excuse me, seven. Just three hits allowed on the day, four strikeouts, five now, and it's an incredible performance out there for White in the circle.